In this video, we want to talk about the MTU, the Maximum Transmission Unit. And what this is, is the largest frame or packet size that can be transmitted or received on an interface. The interface of really any network device. And notice I say that it's the largest frame or packet. That's because we can talk about the MTU at either Layer 2, where we have frames, or Layer 3, where we have packets. Let me give you an example. Consider Router R1 on screen. Let's say that it has an MTU at Layer 3 of 1500 bytes. In other words, the largest packet size, not including the Layer 2 header that's found on a frame. The largest packet size at Layer 3 is 1500 bytes. But maybe this is going over an Ethernet network. How big is an Ethernet header? It's 18 bytes. So if we include that Layer 2 header, the Layer 2 MTU size, in other words, the frame's MTU size, it's going to be 1518 bytes. And the idea is to have matching MTUs at each end of a link. And if R1 and SW1 in this case match, then we should have no problem forwarding a frame or a packet through SW1. But consider a situation where perhaps R1 has a smaller MTU size than SW1. And this might be because we're running a point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet, PPPoE. You see, the PPP header is 8 bytes in size. So we've got this PPP frame that's encapsulated inside of an Ethernet frame. And we want to reduce the data size, the MTU size of the packet, by 8 bytes to accommodate that 8-byte header. So it's a best practice to set the MTU size to 1,492 bytes for a packet if we're doing PPPoE. And by the way, PPPoE is a topic we'll talk about later on in this course. For now, though, just realize that we have mismatched MTU sizes here at Layer 3. What happens if a switch SW1 sends a packet into R1? It says, sorry, I'm not able to receive this because it's larger than my MTU size. Now, that's not to say that every packet coming from SW1 is going to exceed the MTU size. It can send smaller packets. That's no problem. But let's just imagine that it did send at the maximum size. It did send a 1,500-byte packet. R1 says, sorry, I cannot accommodate that. What's it going to try to do instead? Well, since it's too big at 1,500 bytes, it's going to chop it up. It's going to cut it in two. It's going to fragment it, and then it's going to send smaller packets, the fragments. They'll each get their own header, and they'll be transmitted out. However, sometimes, and this is specific to IP version 4, the header of a packet, it can have a DF bit set, the don't fragment bit. This means that if it's received by a router and that router says, nope, that's exceeding my MTU size, I'm going to have to fragment it, we can explicitly tell the router that, nope, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to fragment me. What happens in a case like that? Well, let's imagine, once again, that SW1 is sending traffic into R1 and the DF bit is set this time. R1 says, got to discard it because it needs to be fragmented, and it says it doesn't want to be fragmented. Now, of course, we need to let the sender know that something happened. So what we're going to do in response to this is send an ICMP message. And this ICMP message that we send back to the sender says, fragmentation was needed, but the DF bit was set. Now, this is a bit different with IP version 6. With IP version 6, there is no DF bit. So what happens? Well, IP version 6, it's also going to respond in a situation like this to a dropped packet because the MTU size was too small on the receiving device. It's also going to respond, but its ICMP message, it's an ICMP version 6 message, it says packet too big. And what IP version 6 will do, it supports a feature called MTU path discovery, it's going to say, oh, I was sending too large of a packet. Let me see if I can dynamically adjust that. And an IP version 6 sender will dynamically reduce its packet size, and it will try sending a smaller packet. If it gets another packet too big response, it's going to say, oh, I'm still too big. Let's reduce it some more. And it's going to keep reducing, reducing, reducing until finally it stops getting those ICMP version 6 messages coming back to it. And this process is called MTU Path Discovery, and it runs by default with IP version 6. It's actually supported with IP version 4. But since we don't have a don't fragment bit for IP version 6, IP version 6 is always going to be doing this MTU Path Discovery.